Welcome back to the show where we run you through all the Dolphins news you need to know about. After anything, the news you need to know about. We run you through the fan camp where we answer fans, fans questions. And we have a ton of stuff to talk about in today's show. Obviously, Dolphins made some Ross moves we're going to talk about. Um, the preseason game which then happened, uh, which was amazing. It was one of the more most fun preseason, probably the most fun preseason game um, that I've seen since doing the podcast for sure. Uh, Chris has done such a good job of fighting young talent in the later rounds, um, and that showed throughout the entire preseason, I think. And he's always been really good at that. He's always been good at uh, undrafted free agents and 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 um, mid to 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 a little bit later round picks, second round on. He's been, he, I mean, so many great players on this roster um, have come from the later rounds. Um, from the second round on, you think about Javon Holland, Xavier Howard, Jerome Baker, all of those guys are after the first round, and um, he just consistently does it, and we're going to talk about some of those players later in the show, but let's get to the news you need to know about. Uh, this first new story comes from Pro Football Rumors, Dolphins open to trading tight end Mike Gesicki. Now, this was widely reported um, over the last few days. I don't know if we really got into it last week. We did talk about... or. Uh, last week but we did talk about um the tight end room and how it needs to block better and how mike needs to and his fit in the offense and i think a lot of people have talked about that and it's true to a certain extent and, and i definitely had my doubts last week i thought the tight ends did a significantly better job in this game uh i thought they blocked better than they had the entire preseason especially carter i thought he had a really good game um, and I'm interested to see what they're going to do with him. But I also thought Mike looked good in this game too. There were two plays that I was like, oh, it's the kind of, I was like, I kind of see what they're going to do now with him. And I think the biggest thing, especially off of play action, uh, is he's going to get so much space to work the middle of the field. Uh, I think you're going to see his receptions go way high, way high. I think he's going to see less man coverage. And because of the speed on the field, and especially if the Dolphins can get the run game going, he's going to find a lot of open space in zone coverage. So I, I think keeping him, and not just because of the red zone, but because of that reason. <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. Um, because of that reason, uh, I think it obviously would be really smart to keep him on the team. Uh, moving forward uh, I think honestly out of everybody on the roster he is our best possession receiver um, he does run really good routes especially if he has space and in zone cover he's a very smart player obviously he's great at uh, catching balls in traffic and I think him lining up there was a really cool play where he kind of lined up he lined up in the traditional tight end spot with his hand on the ground, but it was a little bit off of the off of the offensive line, almost like he was a slot receiver. But it hid him in the offense to the defense, uh, and it allowed him to get even more space. Because one thing that Mike has not been great at is, and this is the receiving part of his game. He's never he's so long strided. He's never been a good route runner. Him getting in and out of his breaks is really slow. So anytime, and this is something the Dolphins have seen, <clears throat> excuse me, this is something that the Dolphins have seen a lot of over the years, is man coverage. Because they really haven't had the quarterback play to beat it, and they really haven't had the weapons to beat it. Uh, and that's been a huge issue for Mike. I think his numbers would have been, if he was in any other offense, especially let's say something like New Orleans or um, a competent offense, let's put it that way, I think his numbers would have been significantly better. Um, and I, the fact that he's going to see less man coverage, hopefully this year, and like I said, since the speed is really going to spread defenses thin, uh, I, I think this is going to be uh, a really good year for him, and uh, I would look for him to have a really good. And this is complete the complete opposite of what I was saying last week. But if they use him strategically and in the ways that they did in that game, uh, I think it'll be fantastic. And to finish my earlier point, because I didn't finish it, there was two plays. The, the, the play that I described where he kind of lined up in a traditional way where, uh, to hide him from the defense off of play action. There was another play where they, and again, this is something that the Dolphins are going to do a lot this year, and this is something that I just do, is constantly move pieces around. So it's going to be hard for defenses to key in on some of these players because of the constant movement, the shifting, even on the tight ends or the receivers. 
it then has to the defense just gives some it gives the defense something happen, uh, to think about even more. So all of those reasons I think Mike is going to be great. And there was a play where they motioned Mike into the backfield and they caught uh, because they saw the blitz coming. They caught the Eagles in a blitz and he was wide open underneath uh, for a hard out. Tua didn't see him. It was the only time I've seen Tua all preseason. And this is something Tua's always been great at is reading the field. But he was wide open. So the Dolphins are going to move him around get him in spaces where um, he can be successful. And I think he's going to have a great year, actually, in this offense. Uh, so let's move on to the next news story. I hope, and this is obviously the news story that we just talked about, was him being traded. Obviously, Mike shut that down later um, in a press conference. I don't think, I for sure don't think they're going to trade him. So I don't think you guys have to worry about that. I, I, even when I first read the story, I at no point did I think that he, he would be traded. Rarely, tra- in, at least in the NFL, it's rare that when players are franchise tag, they're traded. I, don't, I can't remember the last time. Um, unless, I guess, they get the, a, a new deal negotiated. But I don't think any franchises would be willing to do that. Um and I don't think the Dolphins are going to do it. So I, it, it would blow... I would not even worry about that if you were a Dolphin, especially with how, how much he played in preseason, uh, throughout the entire preseason. Uh, let's get into this last news story. Um, this comes from Pro Football Rumors. Uh, Dolphins to sign uh, Trey Flowers. I don't know if I said that... When I, when I meant by Mike, because I didn't say his last name, Mike McDaniel shut that down in a press conference. Um where he said, pretty much said, not pretty much, he did say that the rumors have no, they're not true. Uh, and uh, I I, tend, I will believe Mike, because we have seen some head coaches lie about certain certain roster decisions in the past. Uh, but this comes from Pro Football Rumors. Dolphins sign defensive end, former Detroit Lions and Patriots defensive end, Trey Flowers to a one-year deal uh, that could add up to $3 million, including incentives. One thing I didn't really, and again, he has been in the Lions the last two years, and I haven't watched a ton of Lions football, but especially last year, I was like, what the heck, you know, I, I just figured Trey Flowers was kind of on his way out, but apparently he was dealing with injuries last year. He played seven out of the uh, seven out of the 17 games last year, or 18 games now, right? Um, yeah, let me, fact, let me make sure I'm right about that. Yeah, he started seven games last year, played in seven games. So he dealt with injuries last year, <clears throat> and I was like, wow. I thought they could just completely left him, especially with the emergencies of people like Charles Harris over there. I was like, oh. I th-. But no, he he uh, was apparently going to start that year, and he, he was dealing with some injuries. So, uh, And that's something Trey Flowers has always been kind of... Uh, he hasn't been able to stay very healthy, especially ever since he had the career in New England. Um, and I guess that was a Matt Patricia pick and all that other stuff, but, um, so, as, like, does he have anything left in the tank? Uh, I, it'll be interesting to see him in a rotation, more of, like, obviously he's going to be in a reliever role, and not necessarily going to have to take the beating that a starting defensive end is going to have to take. I think this is a great signing. This is a great first and second down player, especially if he can stay healthy, and if he does have anything left in the tank. He's never been a great pass rusher. He's a multiple guy, so you can put him inside or outside. And he's a great, great run defender in this defense. It's, even when he was with Detroit with Matt Patricia, obviously they run a similar scheme. Uh, and in New England, uh, he was a, always a great run defender. He was that classic Bill Belichick, set-the-edge kind of a guy. And it just makes the run defense even better. It gets the defensive line bigger and stronger on first and second down. It, it didn't really need to be <laughs> because they do have so many big guys. But... Uh, it, it, um, it, uh, allows the Dolphins to be, not only have more depth at that position, but keep the defensive line fresh, um, and be more multiple and better on against the run as well. So I actually really like this signing. I think it's a high reward and no risk, obviously. And, uh, I'm interested to see what Trey does because this is the scheme that he's thrived in, in the past. And this is what he made his money in and is being a great run defender. Because he was never a great sack guy. I mean, even his time in New England in his career year, um, he had the seven sacks. So, And he's never been that, especially even when you watch him play. Um, 
he's never been that, but he's a fantastic run defender and a really good physical player. So I, I, I'm really, really happy with this. Um, just, uh, you know, if you look at some of the great teams of the last 10 years, they, they all had deep benches on their defensive line. Um, so this is, this is something that I think is going to go a long way. So I think that's it. I think we covered all the news. Um, <clears throat> we're obviously doing this before roster cuts, which we might, I might make a separate video on, especially if Skylar Thompson, if, if there's something like egregious, I, I think I'll make a video on it, but I'm pretty sure I think we all kind of... And especially with Skylar Thompson, they do something weird with Skylar. I will, I will definitely make a video on that uh, because that would be obviously a huge mistake. But uh, so let's get into the game, which there's a lot to talk about in this game. The Dolphins blow out the Philadelphia Eagles, the Eagles excuse me, uh, 48 to 10. Um, and I guess we'll start with uh, what do we start with here? Because there's so much to talk about. Uh, let's start with the offensive line. I think the depth on the offensive line is significantly better than it has been in years. With players like Coleman and Greg Little. I think they've both played pretty pretty dang good in preseason so far. Um, obviously, other players like Salman Kinley and Michael Dieter, who uh, might also come off the bench. So the depth is fantastic on the offensive line, which I haven't been able to say in a long time. And I know that's something that Dolphins fans have been scared of because of the the, the whole thing with turnaround arm said You don't want everything to ride on one player, on, especially on the offensive line. I don't think you're going to have to worry about that this year. So that's a great, great sign. I thought the run game looked way better. I thought the tight ends executed significantly better in this game, which led to... Uh, a lot of big lanes, <clears throat> and you can see even in, in this game with the fullbacks and tight ends how important they are to the offense, and especially to some of the stuff, you know, a lot of the stuff in this game, in this run scheme, a lot of it's reading the defensive line, reading where they go, uh, or if they go left or right, and the cutback lanes are so important. So if your tight ends and, and fullbacks can't either get si consistently get the weak side defender, uh, on some of these plays, it's going to be, you're not going to be able to get this run game going like you want it to. Um, and I thought they did a great job of that in this game. Uh, so between the offensive line and the tight ends, I thought the blocking was fantastic, the best it's been uh, all preseason. I know some people uh, are concerned about showing too much of your hand in, in preseason. I disagree with that. There's a lot of really good teams in, in, in the NFL that run more exotic and stuff that they're going to do in the season to get ready for the regular season. And when you listen to former players <clears throat> talk about that, they all kind of seem to have the same opinion where it is like I would, you would rather do that in preseason to get ready for the regular season. And a lot of former coaches have heard say that in interviews too. So I'm not worried about that at all. And it was really nice to see the offensive line and tight ends execute at that level. Um, it, so it, I, I think taking preseason in as a whole, the, the, the big takeaway has been, I think the depth, especially in pass protection, is significantly better than on the offensive line than it has been in years. One thing I will note, and I know some people are probably going to be like, oh, that was kind of a so-so play, was the Austin Jackson missed block, which was kind of just bad effort. Tua did hold on to the ball for a little longer than you normally would get in the pocket, and he tried to scramble, um, and it was just not a great play by Austin Jackson. Now, with the emergences of Coleman and even Greg Little, who's started elsewhere and, and has looked good, um, we'll see what they, maybe they move him around. I, d I doubt that, because Austin Jackson, especially in the run game, I thought really popped in this game. Um, and, and played well. I just think it was kind of like a whatever play. He's played great throughout preseason, so and he's had a really good offseason according to to the beat writers. So I, I think I'm going to cut him in a little slack on this one because he has looked great. So I wouldn't worry about Austin Jackson. Um, I thought he looked great in the run game, and I thought he's been pretty dang good in pass protection so far this year too, or in preseason. Now it is preseason, so we'll see what happens in the regular season, but uh, I, I th I've liked what I've seen from Austin Jackson so far. And that has not been the case in the past. So um, I, I think the biggest takeaway uh, from preseason and this game was the depth on the offensive line and the huge improvement in the run game as well. And the pass protection, I think, is going to be better than it has in, in many years.
So let's move on from the offensive line and get into the running backs. I thought the running backs played fantastic. Um, uh, it's going to be a tough decision to make because uh, they all do so they all do so many things differently. I think locks for the roster: Sony Michelle, Raheem Mostert. Um, oof. The third one is hard. If I'm being honest with you guys, I'm going to say Savannah Ahmed is the third guy. Now, if they keep four, then obviously Gaskin will make it. But I don't know if they will. Um, maybe they keep him on the practice squad. Um, maybe another team. I could see another team kind of picking him up, though, if that happens. Um, man, I don't know. Chris Cree's going to have to make a tough decision. Uh, I you know even Dokes and Zaquandre White I thought have looked good in in that game and had moments in the preseason, uh, but I don't obviously those guys would wouldn't even come close to Gaskin because Gaskin can give you a lot in in the passing game as well. So uh, so I I think for, at least my takeaways from this game and, and all of preseason Michelle Moster and Ackman have looked the best in my opinion. Dokes had a pretty good game in this game, but I think those three, to me, are the best running backs on the roster. Uh, so let's move on from the running backs. Uh, and most look great. If most of it can stay healthy, um, he, he can be one of the best running He can be a top 10 running back, for sure. Uh, his, his speed and vision is just, especially in this offense, is so good. Um, so let's get into the receivers. Obviously, Tyree Kill's first game as a Dolphin went, you know, his first catch went for, like, 50 yards on, on, on that um, that uh, little play-action play that they did. He looked great. And this is Tyree Kill. I mean, Tyree Kill is Tyree Kill. He's one of the best players I've ever seen play the, that position. Um, he's, like, a way better version of Deshaun Jackson. Um, and, uh, yeah, he's just great. He's always been great. He's still great. And uh, he looked great. And it was uh, how fitting is it that the first play that of him as a Dolphin is a deep pass. And um, one of the greatest deep threats of all time. One of the greatest speed players of all time. And uh, he showed that in this preseason game. And we'll talk about the, the throw. Uh, I thought the throw was fantastic. It was one of the things, I guess, in a press, the press conference. I haven't seen it yet, but someone told me this. That, um, uh, that Tyree Kill was... Tyreek Hill wanted to run that play, and that makes sense because he kind of audibled and called a go out. I don't know. I, I need to watch the press conference myself, but it's very weird you ever see kind of where he was on the field, especially under center, run a go ball. That's, you, may, you never really see that. Uh, hence why I think the throw was the way it was, uh, especially since he had to beat a safety in a corner, and that's why I think Tua threw it inside, but that's just my opinion. Um... To kind of do it like a post route, and, and maybe I'm overthinking that, but uh, that's that's kind of how I took that throw. I don't think it was underthrown at all. That ball was 50 yards in the air, and it was one heck of a catch, too, man. Uh, very awkward angle throw, too, um, at least in my opinion. Uh, and uh, But it was still a great throw, and I had a great catch, and a great play for Tyree Kill um, uh, to, uh, in his first play as a Dolphin. He's just a great player, and one of my all-time favorites of the last few years, for sure. Uh, this next, um, or I don't know why I'm saying this next thing, I'm like, uh, the questions. Any other receivers that pops to me? I thought Rivercraft looked the best he's had throughout the preseason. I think he's looked pretty terrible, though, uh, the last two games, especially in man coverage. Uh, so we'll see what they do with him, but he ran a nice job, you know, obviously, in the corner of the end zone, too. It was one of the be the best throws I've seen of his, to his career. Um, to his mates of those this preseason, we're like, man, his, his arm, he just looks better. And uh, that was a fantastic throw in the corner of the end zone on the run. But, uh, yeah, Rivercraft had a great game in this game, four receptions for 54 yards, uh, an average of 13 yards a catch. But uh, I'm, I don't know if he can kind of if he can compete with the other guys, really. Uh, I thought Len Bowden it continues to make things even more interesting with his touchdown reception uh, that was after the catch, and that's something that has been a big theme uh, of the offseason of how – Mike wants to get people and run after the catch positions. I don't think there's a better player on the team that's better than... Obviously Tyreek, but 
after him, there's nobody on the team that's better at it than Lynn Bowden. Lynn Bowden brings, brings a physicality and great escapability and, and elusiveness uh, to, to the team. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do with him because I do think he's better at, even like in the screen game and stuff like that, I think he's uh, the best at it other than Tyreek Kill on the team. Uh, Hunter Long popped a little bit. I didn't bring him up in the tight end room, but uh, I thought he played. Obviously, had a couple opportunities. Could have had two touchdowns. That route was not pat offensive pass interference. It was a normal route, uh, but he dropped it anyway, so it doesn't. It didn't really matter. But um, uh, so yeah, I thought he looked really good in this game. Yeah, but the, the receivers overall, like Trent Shurfield, I love. Uh, Braylon Sanders, I thought has looked great as well. Uh, it, it's just going to be so hard to, to, to keep them all, obviously. Um, but I think, if honestly, I, I just feel like Lynn Bowden has to make the roster. As a punt returner and kick returner, too, I think he's fantastic. Um, obviously, you don't want Tyreek Kill doing that all the time. Uh, it's, on punts, I would have Tyreek Kill do every single one. But on kickoffs, absolutely not. I think Lynn Bowden would be fantastic for that. Preston Williams... Clearly, he's dealing with something. He has not looked good in this offense. I think, obviously, that's going to be something that uh, the Dolphins move on from. And the emergence, of, the emergence of Eric Azucama, it's just going to make so. It's just so hard, dude. You can't keep them all. The best receiving core, by far, since I've been doing this this podcast, and I've been doing it since 2016. So, it, it uh, it's 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 pretty awesome to watch it's gonna be a really tough decision for the Dolphins really really tough but I think for sure Preston Williams and Rivercraft uh, are not gonna make the roster Trent Sherfield and Braylon Sanders could be interesting I would also put Braylon Sanders in that category I could see them putting keeping on the practice squad maybe they value the 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 young because uh, he's he's younger than Sherfield but I don't know I think Trent Sherfield is probably a little bit better of a player right now. I don't I don't know it's gonna be interesting to see what they do uh, so let's get into the quarterbacks. Um, I thought Tua looked fantastic. Um, you know, one of the things that I think people have, uh, at least some of the criticism, criticism, especially in the national media, um, is can he make some of those like deep comeback throws out outside the numbers throws? And he has shown throughout the entire preseason that absolutely he can. And in, in all of the training camp videos, that we've seen, a lot of them have been on, on the outside, um, and I think and I'm talking about deep outside. Okay, those are those are tough tough throws to make, um, especially off of play action when you have to turn your quarter back to the, to the quarterback. His arm just looks better. Tua looks healthier, the healthiest he's ever been. He's moving around the pocket amazingly. Um, he just looks great, and I can't wait for the season to start. He was 6-for-7 for 121 yards and a touchdown. He scored 17 points uh, when he helmed the offense. He just looked great. He, he looks like a perfect fit in the offense, too. And um, the Dolphins are really accentuating his, uh, his his ability. And I love the big middle finger to everybody with how many deep throws uh, that they've called, and especially in training camp and in the game. I think uh, it's really been like, yeah, well, take this. And uh, I've really enjoyed it, and uh, I'm, I'm obviously looking forward to. And the aggressiveness of the offense is 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 uh, been the I think the biggest change and the biggest notice and scheme difference is just the aggressiveness in the passing game. Uh, I thought Teddy Bridgewater looked like Teddy Bridgewater. He's four for ten for seventy four yards, and he just he's just what he is at this point in his career. I think Skylar Thompson has just been way better than him throughout preseason I think he moves in the pocket better than Teddy does at this point in his career I think um he makes he sees the field better I think his arm is better uh yeah I just think he's played better and and I think he fits the scheme better too so yeah I just if you're gonna cut anybody cut Teddy Bridgewater I think Skylar Thompson is more than capable of something happening to it of playing an NFL game and he showed that throughout the entire preseason. They've played the same competition, Skyler and, and, and Teddy, with the same receiver core and everything. Uh, and Skyler has thoroughly outplayed him and ran the offense better as well. 
And this whole, st- this whole, everybody on the broadcast, uh, on the Dolphins preseason broadcast, uh, and all the beat writers are like, do the Dolphins keep him? Like, what are, what, what is, what are we even talking about? If you're gonna get rid of any, anybody, I don't care if you take a cap hit or not, get rid of Teddy Bridgewater. Like, I don't even understand, I mean, I, I just don't get it. I, I really don't. And one of the things that I, I found, um, it really cool was Jason Taylor obviously calls the games uh, for the Dolphins um, crew um, and for for the home stuff and, and, and for the obviously I don't know if he still does the radio or what the heck the deal is with that um, and I don't know if he'll still do like the, you can like watch the, the local broadcast on, on some of the national games I don't know if he still does that because I, I, it doesn't matter but Jason Taylor it's cool to see a first ballot Hall of Fame defender talk about how great Skylar Thompson has been and how the Dolphins have found something in him. So the idea that Skylar Thompson is even talked about in that way I think is insane. I think the, the two best quarterbacks as this guy just hits it. Anyway, as the two guy, the two best quarterbacks in, in all of football uh, in preseason, when it comes to passing the football, I think the two most impressive guys that were rookies where it was Kenny Pickett and Skylar Thompson. I think Malik Willis has obviously been exciting, but in terms of playing the position, uh, I think those two have been the best. Uh, and that's insane to say. And uh, you can make an argument that Skylar has been the best um, throughout the entire preseason. So uh, I, I just don't I don't understand why it's even uh, a question. But it'll be interesting to see what they do. I, I think that they found something really special in him. You know, ever since the draft and, and looking into him, I've liked what I've seen from him in college. People forget he missed a lot of games in college. And he played and elevated his team against better competition and and won games. So he didn't. his college career kind of went under the radar. Uh, and... He's been fantastic. Again, he had another great game, 7 for 10, 103 yards, and 3 touchdowns. So, and he's seen it all this preseason. He saw the Buccaneers, who ran their normal defense, which I thought was weird, in that preseason game where they blitzed and they played a lot of man coverage and they stacked the box. Skyler was great in that game. He played the Raiders, where they played a, a lot of... Uh, Mixed coverages, they did blitz their safeties a lot, which was weird, um, especially on, on some of those bootlegs, and he played great in that game. He played in this game where it was pretty much soft coverage the entire game, and he lit them up again. So he's seen every coverage, um, and I think the most impressive game from him was definitely in the Buccaneers game, because there was not a lot of room to throw the football. They loaded the box, the run game wasn't going, uh, and he made a lot of nice throws. So, I don't know, I, I just, I've been really, really, really impressed with Skyler, and uh, I think, the, even the question of him, like, should he be on the 53, I, I, I think is stupid. In terms of defense, um, I think the defensive line is going to be special. And, oh, I'm about to sneeze. I think Jalen Phillips had, I mean, good God. The man looks ridiculous. Uh, like, <sighs> he has a chance to be, like, so good, dude. I, it, it, like, oh, my God. He just looked great. Uh, and I haven't seen a pass rusher look like that in a long time um, uh, in a Dolphins uniform. And he has, like, the, the ability to become... Uh, like a Jason Taylor, like he has that kind of physical uh, traits and those, and, and that kind of physical ability. And he's a really smart player. Um, and he does everything at a high level, and he's looked great, especially his first step. And his pass rush just looks significantly better than it did a year ago. Uh, and I think the rest of the defensive line, Zach Sealer, continues to become uh, one of the best interior defensive linemen in the NFL, who nobody talks about. Uh, he's looked great. The entire the defense looks bigger and stronger this year, especially up front. And with the addition of Melvin Ingram and Trey Flowers, uh, it's just it's going to be really tough to run against us. So, and John Jenkins uh, bringing him back with Raekwon Davis looks better. Christian Wilkins looks better. The defense just 
uh, up front is one of the best units. I would say a top three unit, especially with the depth that we've added in the National Football League. And Jalen Phillips looks like he can have a, a, a top five outside player a year. Um, and one of the best drafts in the history of the franchise. Like, for real. Like, not even, uh, like, honestly could go down on, I mean, dude, like, the first three picks are crazy good, and, uh, I, I, and again, like I said, if Jalen Phillips, like, he looks like he can have that kind of year and be that kind of player, like, this defensive line is, is easily top three, especially with the additions of, of getting bigger and stronger up front to deal with the run, um, I think is going to go a long way this year as well, so, I thought the defense looked great. Uh, the corners are going to be, and I can't even believe I'm saying this right now, but uh, they got to stay healthy. Like, Nick Needham looks fantastic. He looked really good on the outside all preseason. Um, but clearly, after, uh, what's his name? Crossan? Um, it it gets it gets pretty bad. Campbell has played great all preseason. I would expect him. I don't know what they're going to do with him, but he's looked good. I, who is the guy? Thirty? It's not thirty six. It's thirty eight. What is his name? He also plays corner. He's an undrafted rookie. What is your name? Ah, uh, guys, I'm drawing a blank. I'm so sorry. Uh, he's looked really good at corner as well. Um, so th there are some players that have looked good in man coverage. Uh, Noah had a nice breakup down the sideline. He still looks not. I swear to God, it, it, he, if, if you if I didn't know who he was, I would think that guy's playing out of position. Just the way he plays, man, it just does not look natural to him. Uh, so yeah. And that is, uh, I think, the biggest, like, holy, like, that's a big kind of red flag. It's, it's been like, okay, the depth of corner after the fourth guy isn't insanely great. It, it's pretty, it's not great at all. So I think that's been, like, the, the most worrisome thing. But if the starters can stay healthy, it's one of the best lineups in the NFL with those three out there playing football, and especially with the improvement of the defensive line, they're going to be, I think, in more third and long situations, which is going to lead to, I think, a great year for Ben, and especially since I think that they're going to play a little bit more quarters coverage and zone coverage. Um, I think that's going to really help out the corners as well. Uh, and help out the defense, too. I, and especially mixing it up against uh, some of the high-powered offenses in the NFL, I think is going to really help... Um, uh, in the long run, too, because especially, you know, the Dolphins can get a little bit of sa samey uh, when they're not in their blitz packages. It's a lot of single high, and I think if you get teams in favorable situations like a third down, it doesn't hurt to throw in some different coverages, and I think that's hopefully something we see this year. But yeah, the defense physically looks fantastic, especially the defensive line. Like, like when you see them line up, you're like, dang, man, they just they're just bigger and better. So, yeah, overall, I cannot wait for the season to start. Um, this team looks fantastic. And I, and I think the biggest, two biggest takeaways this year that I have had from the, pre here's the three biggest ones, because there's three. The defensive line looks way better. The, uh, the uh, excuse me, I'm drawing a blank. The defensive line looks way better. The offense looks significantly better schematically. It's it's it leagues more aggressive than it was a year ago. Um, and third and third and final thing is I think the pass protection and the depth on the offensive line is better. So those are my three biggest takeaways. And I guess Skylar Thompson, if you want to throw him in there too, and Tua looking better. But I think those three things have stood out to me more than anything else. So. Um, that is it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Oh, wait, we didn't do the fan q and I'm so sorry, everybody. Let's get into the fan q and I apologize. Uh, did we do the... Dude, am, am I losing my mind? It's like, did I do the fan q No, I didn't do the fan q &A. Uh, I can't believe I got this far into the video and, and tried to wrap it up. 
This first question comes from Jagpack18. He says, thoughts on Gaskin. He looked pretty good. I hope they keep him. We've seen over the past couple seasons that he can be a difference maker, especially catching passes out of the backfield. Yeah, but the other three, I, th I think Ahmed has looked better than him, especially running the football. I think he's just his first step in his burst through the hole is significantly better than Gaskin. I think he's a more n gifted runner, but it, you're right. Like, I don't know, man. <laughs> it's a tough one. It's a tough, tough one. Um, but I think... Ackman, Michelle, and Mostert, and obviously Edmonds. I forget. I keep forgetting about Edmonds, dude. I think those guys are the best players on best running backs on the team. So I think Gaskin is unfortunately the odd man out. This next question comes from Vegas. Uh, he says this offense looks tailor made for Tua. He said, "Do you see weaknesses in the game in his game uh, in his game over the course of the preseason?" I think the only thing that I'm worried about with Tua. Uh, is his ability to throw the football and and again we won't know and I do think his arm looks a lot stronger but when we get into November and December and the conditions aren't great and, and I know this is a cliche to bring up but it's a fair question can he still push the ball and control the football because last year I think out of his entire career even his first year we kind of saw a little bit of it in his first year, but his second year, I thought it was way worse, especially after the injury. His ability to throw in cold and, and bad weather environments. Like, that's, I think, the biggest thing I'm, I'm, I think I'm concerned about of his game. And in a division where you play in the AFC East, that's important because you do have to play big games in, in bad weather stadiums. So that's the thing I think I'm more, most concerned about. I, everything else I, I'm is I think looks great. Uh, this question comes from Vegas. He says this offense. No, excuse me. He said the protection against the Eagles was pretty good. How confident are you in Austin Jackson's improvement at right tackle? Uh, I I think. Um, I think he's looked a lot better, especially in the run game, because that's something that he's always kind of sucked at, is pushing people off the ball. But he, I think that's something that he, he just looks way better at. This, the, he's, there's a couple times where he's just like flat-up pushed people off the ball like five yards, especially in, in the Eagles game in particular. So I do think the improvement is real. I think the hype is real from the beat writers. In some years it hasn't been. But uh, I think he looks way better, especially in the run game. Um, this quite another question. This is another question from Vegas. He says Tua looks new and improved. He says, "What do you think has played the biggest? Is the biggest factor one another year removed from his hip injury slash a full off season? Two, the confidence infused by Coach McDaniel. Three, the impersonation. Oh, excuse me, not the impersonation. I'm so sorry. The implement the implementation of an offense that's more fitting to his skill set." Four better weapons. You can only pick one. Um, okay. I would say it's a combination of the of, of the two, but since I uh, of three and four, but since I can only pick one, I would say the impl the implementation of the offense that fits more fitting to, to him. I think it's not only that, but it's just a much more significantly creative and more successful offense than what he's played in up until this point because something that i think people kind of and you know chan gailey is kind of an outlier but something that i think people take for or don't really look at is anytime a new england guy goes to a team their offense be, immediately becomes significantly worse and is way worse just way worse and we've seen that, other than with the McDaniels, obviously, even though when he went to Denver, obviously that didn't go well. But with Patricia, Judge, like, those guys destroyed their offenses. And same, the same thing could be said for Brian Flores. So I think it, it cannot be under, overstated enough how bad the scheme was. And, you know, I, I think one, thing's, one thing that I do regret um, saying is the Chad O'Shea thing uh, looking back on it, even though we finished really high in, in, in passing, um, I, I, I want to be very clear that the the offenses, and again, this is something that I've said before, but the offenses that Brian Fuller has threw out there were not good, were really bad, and I think 
that has also kind of hampered his development as a quarterback as well. Um, uh, let's move on to this question. This question comes from SM. He says, uh, "You think if uh, he says you think it would upset anyone if the Dolphins' quarterback depth chart into week depth chart into week one is two or one Skyler two Teddy three? No, no. I don't think it's gonna accept, that would make a lot of people happy." Uh, this next question comes from Vegas again. He says, does Kinley make the 53? Yes. I think he probably will. Uh, this next question comes from SM again. He says, do you like the addition of Trey Flowers? Yes. Uh, this question comes from Jackpack18. He says, who is the bigger draft bust, Noah or Austin? Noah, and it's not even close. Austin is not a draft bust yet. This next question comes from Richard Rodriguez. He says, the offense was clicking tonight. What are the chances the offense finishes in the top 10? Uh, I, see, a lot of people bring up Tua, and they're worried about him. The only thing I'm worried about is the run game. Uh, I think that is the only thing that I need to see in a regular season game to be completely... It's not even the scheme. It's just the execution of it. Um, I just want to see this offensive line do that against a regular season NFL starting defensive line. Because especially at home games early in the year, if they can get the run game going, they're going to score like 30 a game. With the, with the receiving core that they have, especially off play action, defenses are going to get too tired. They're not going to want to run with these guys. They're going to get worn out from the run game, and it's just going to make life. It's just going to just going to be impossible to guard us, especially at home. Like I said, early in the year. So, yeah, there's a good chance they could finish in the top ten easily. Uh, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Almost forgot the fan Q&A. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And, uh, and uh, yeah, and I think I, I'm definitely probably going to, if something crazy happens, I'm definitely going to make a video on the fan q &A. Or, not the fan q but uh, a video about if they if they kind of, if they mess up anything on the, on the 53-man roster. So, that is it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm super clear. I, dude, I it's just, the team just looks really good. And I'm excited for the season to start. So, I'll see you guys in the, the next one.